there was a lovely old gentleman who lived down the road from me in a village in Hertfordshire, and he was an ex-military colonel who'd been out in the Middle East. And this guy, from a small ride in a prototype Range Rover on Salisbury Plain, on a military facility in Britain, he then bought not one, but two. So he had a company car and his own car, and he drove them out to Arabia and Amman and Jordan, places like that, with his wife on numerous occasions. And he owned that car for 35 years. And one day, he said to me, John, I'm getting old, would you like the car? So I took it off him, and it was a Tuscan blue Range Rover, very early Range Rover, with a washable interior that you could hose out when dirty. And that car, once I'd driven it and used it, even though it ate petrol, it just consumed petrol, it was so much fun to drive. And it was in a very hilly area of Britain, and it was great. You could steam up the hills, down the hills, you could see everywhere you needed to, and it, it was a real workhorse. I managed to hitch a trailer behind it, I could pull logs, I could cart anything I wanted around. And I owe a lot to that guy, because he, he was the inspiration. Tony Corston, this old colonel who'd had that from year one, he was the inspiration for, for owning a Range Rover, wanting to drive a Range Rover. My name is John Holland, and I've had a long love affair with two-door Range Rovers. My Range Rover's a 1981 3.5 litre V8. Standard, nothing added, nothing taken away. I suppose the unique thing about it is it's in camel trophy colours. I tell you, it's a curious colour. I know sand glow, camel trophy colour, apart from the fact that everybody says it's a very difficult colour to get absolutely right. There seems to be one person says it's one shade, someone else says it's another shade. It can go from Coleman's mustard to sort of Dijon mustard to peach to beige to whatever, depending on what light you're looking at it. But, um, but it's, it's definitely one thing. It's a colour that seems to grow on people. Uh, and don't ask me why it just does, it seems to just grow on you. You go out, you look through the window in the morning and it's there with the morning dew on it or it's there with the evening sun going down on it and you just think it's a little bit of desert, it's a little bit of camel, it's a little bit of, you know, exotic 4 by 4 on your, on your drive. So from that point of view, I, I, I like this particular car, I really do. And I'm going to keep it and just enjoy it and drive it. Growing up at a time when car design really meant something, growing up at a time when the Range Rover was not just, you know, a unique one-off, like it landed from the moon or Mars, it was, it was part of a whole great tradition, not just in Britain, of great car design, of thoughtful car design, where the design of the car, this is the key, it's where the design of the car and the feeling the car gives you comes first. Uh, not, not how many buttons and controls and how, you know, safe it is and, and how much fuel it saves or, you know, whether it's electric or not. It, nothing to do with that. It's about, you know, how it makes you feel in here. That is this something that you can't get from a modern motor car. The classic car world is your ultimate candy shop of automobilia because you go in there and somebody wants a chocolate Range Rover, somebody else wants a Mars bar Porsche. They're, they're sweets on wheels. Classic cars are exotic, delightful treats on four wheels that we pick because we're drawn to them, because we are, by their shape, by their form, by their history, mainly, I guess, Men are drawn to classic cars for two reasons. Their shape, their sexiness, their form, and then together with that, what noise they make. Now, a Range Rover is a great shape. I like the boxiness, the squareness, the way it sits on the road. 
But I also really like the three and a half litre V8 between my legs. What more could a man ask for than that? I think it's very important if you've got a classic car to actually get out there and use it and enjoy it. You pay that money for that vehicle, potentially to have the pleasure of using that vehicle and enjoying that feeling that it gives you. So break through all the bull, if you like, and use a classic car regularly. Use a classic car on a regular basis. Plus they love it. As long as it goes into a garage in the winter, that's fine. There are some times that car can be an absolute pain in the neck in terms of reliability, maintenance, etc. But you've got to just balance that out with the pleasure it gives in terms of driving it and owning it and enjoying it. So that's why I'm going to keep driving a Range Rover, an old Range Rover.